in this case, we will try to verify it using uh, MATLAB uh, for simulation purposes and then for the sake of uh, using this uh, uh, software tool. So same as before, we initialize some variables, sims, and then uh, let us assign variable for A, designate for annuity, press enter. Then the syntax, as you already know, in this uh, version is solved. And then let us just input the following equations. We're in 187400 uh, is equivalent to uh, 6.643 multiplied by A divided by uh, 1 plus 0 0.05 uh, raised to 9. And then this one, and then press enter. Of course, we will arrive at an exact. No? So this is 43,763, uh, same on our problem. Now magnifying uh, the syntaxes as we have used, initialize the variables, here's the syntax for the equations itself, and then the answer. Okay, problem number three, a student makes rental payments of 1,200 per month and wants to know the present value of their annual rentals uh, over a 12-month period. Now, uh, the payments are made at the start of the each month. So uh, the current interest is 8% per annum. Now, uh, let us analyze now, if this is a concept under annuity. Now, uh, to analyze that one, consider if it uh, entails an equal payment. So basically, annual rentals meaning the same amount of payment at the same interval of time. So this one is an annuity problem. And then let us decide for uh, the four types, ordinary, uh, deferred annuity or annuity due. So meaning uh, based from that, uh, based from this statement, start of each month. So basically, this is the concept under annuity due. Uh, so this one is a formula under annuity due directly uh, substituting what we have. However, on this problem, you will notice that upon substitution, uh, so you will notice that the interest is under 12-month period. Uh, so, and then you have paid monthly. Uh, so, uh, that entails a monthly payment, a mode of compounding of monthly, and then uh, the rate of interest is per annum. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, uh, we will be utilizing the following uh, concept under compounding interest. This one. So F is equivalent to P, 1 plus R raised over M raised to MT. Uh, so we in M is a mode of compounding since on our problem it is monthly. So meaning M is now equivalent to 12. Uh, so continuing with the discussion, as you can see, here is the solution proper. Uh, substitute, uh, substituting 1,200 here, 1 plus uh, 0 0.08i, as you can see here, uh, this one, R, uh, rate of interest, 8%, and then M, mode of compounding. And then aside from that, uh, uh, this one, uh, T is actually for annum, and then this one, M, M is for 12. No? That explains this one. And then uh, another one is uh, substituting all the values. Uh, the main problem here is just the concept under the interest, wherein we pay monthly and then the rate is under 8%. So uh, you may want to review again your concept under compounding interest. You just consider the following and then, of course, the following tables. So that yields to uh, 13,000. Uh, 886.90. Uh, I may have forgot this one. This will be uh, the uh, last no, sample problem, sample problem number four. This one is a situational problem. Uh, so we're in uh, Engineer Carlos no, plans to purchase a new house uh, costing 500000 So he can raise the building by issuing 10% 25-year-old bond that will pay uh, 150,000 interest per year and repay the face amount of maturity. 
instead of buying the new house, he has the option of leasing it for $140,000 per year. The first payment due one year from now. So the building has expected life of 25 years if interest charge for leasing is 8%, which is more favorable uh, for Engineer Carlos before uh, borrow or buy or lease. Uh, so basically, let us analyze the situational problem. Uh, if, for example, we have no idea about engineering economics, our first intuition is that we should lease. Uh, why is that? Uh, intuitively, based on the options that, that is stated here, as you can see, uh, for borrowing and buying, borrow some money and then buy, based on the numbers, one, uh, 150,000 per year and then 10%, comparing that one to leasing, which uh, we're in it is much lesser, no? 140,000 per year and then 8% only. So if, for example, on a layman's term, for example, you don't uh, uh, learn engineering economics um, initially, your first intuition is to lease. No? Why is that? Since due to these numbers, no? 140,000 and then 8% only. No? Comparing that one to borrowing and then buying, which is 150,000 and then 10%. No? So uh, from that, uh, applying the concept of engineering economics as an heads up again, no? uh, that would be wrong. No? So basically, we will expect uh, a different answer wherein Although it is much higher in numbers, no, 150,000, 10%, based on the numbers upon computation, Engineer Carlos will be recommended to borrow and then buy. So why is that? Uh, so allow me to introduce uh, the following, uh, although we have introduced it, uh, this already. No? Uh, so the main concept is that uh, applying the concept of our engineering economics, wherein it is under uh, present uh, ordinary. So basically, we already know that it's an annuity since annual payment has been made. Uh, as you can see, interest rate per year. And then this one also, uh, 140,000 per year. So basically, uh, that means an, 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 an annuity problem. So our next problem is now to decide on the four <clears throat> types. No? Uh, so as stated here, interest rate per year. So based from these statements, the first condition are there borrow and buy uh, signifies an ordinary. And with this, since upon receiving this 500,000, he already paid 150,000 no, based on these statements. Also, uh, from these uh, statements, the first payment due one year from now. So basically, it... Uh, if, for example, the, uh, the following statement is different, the first payment due two years from now or three years from now, that will entail a different scenario. No? So we will be using a deferred annuity. However, in this case, the first payment due one year from now also signifies that uh, the payment is done at the end of the year. No? So this is just another terminology in saying that it is an ordinary annuity. Now, uh, so we are now settled with that. Uh, both of the scenarios use ordinary annuity concept. This is the formula for ordinary. The substituting the values, 150,000, and then 10%, 25, of course, minus 1, yields to 1,361,556. Uh, now, if, for example, engineer Carlos list, no, uh, the option is list, so this is the, the substitute the values, 140,000 at 8%, more, much lesser interest rate. No? Same, of course, no? uh, same amount of uh, number of years. Yields to 1,497,468.66. So as observed, no? so you will we would recommend, of course, for Engineer Carlos that he should borrow and buy. Since based from these computations, no, the present worth of that money would be lesser if he just borrow and then buy instead of leasing. No? So uh, without the knowledge of engineering economics, a layman uh, person would initially grab the concept of leasing. 
instead of just borrowing and then buying. So oh, that's the, another importance of uh, uh, learning engineering economics. No? So uh, that ends. No? So for where our learning objective met, we have understand the concept of annuity, wherein we have said the main concept of annuity is that uh, we made equal amount of payment at equal interval of time. Next one, recognize the different types of annuity. We have four main types. Ordinary annuity pertains to the payment made at the end of each period. Next one is an deferred annuity, meaning the payment is made later. So it is not made at the end. It is made at a future period of time. Next is annuity due. It is direct contrast to the deferred annuity wherein the payment has been made. Uh, at the beginning. No? So upon receiving the payment, no, uh, the interest or the monthly amortization has been less to you. So that's the concept for annuity due. And then another for perpetuity, so an infinite or indefinite amount of time of the concept of annuity. Now we have solved several problems uh, for specifically no, the first uh, at um, uh, number one, ordinary. Second is uh, deferred. The third one is annuity due. And the last is a situational problem. We have the uh, we have used no, engineering economics to decide uh, whether to uh, just borrow and then buy a certain property or uh, just go with the option of leasing it. <clears throat> so this formally ends our presentation. Our next topic will be uniform arithmetic and geometric gradient. So for your problem set, uh, consider solving uh, uh, this one. Now make sure to uh, no, to be in, uh, be notified about the compounded uh, mode of compounding here, and then um, another comp mode of compounding, and uh, so on. So this formally ends our presentation uh, for today. Uh, thank you and have a good day.